Can we transfer genes between species? Okay, we're gonna look at how we can actually do this. And the answer is, yes, because the genetic code is universal. Caveman, duck, human, plant, butterfly, worm, geese, goose, ducks, and geese all use A's, T's, and C's, and G's in our DNA. Even bacteria, all living things use the same genetic code. Therefore, we can actually transfer, transfer. We can actually transfer genes in between different organisms, which is very, very awesome. But it's a, uh, I don't, it's either awesome or allows scientists to get a little too creative with glowing pigs by isolating the gene that helps to produce a fluorescent glow in jellyfish and putting it into different types of organisms. So cool, but. Is there a real, is there a good function or are we just trying to prove that we can do it? So it's called universal. The genetic code is universal so we can actually do that. The number of chromosomes is going to vary between different organisms, but uh, the DNA code is the same. So if I figure out where the gene is, I can actually chop and chop using specific miniature scissors called restriction enzymes. And then we can transfer those genes back and forth between different types of organisms. So let's look at a specific example and how we can do that. Do a search for this video online, Restriction Enzyme Eco R1, and you'll get a really cool uh, idea of how these miniature scissors I keep referring to actually work. So they actually move along um, a DNA sequence and they're looking for a particular pattern. So maybe a GAATCC. And every time it sees a GAATCC, wherever it exists, it will do some kind of hydrolysis reaction and cut the nucleotides at that point. And if you cut with the exact same type of scissors, you can create something called sticky ends, which we'll see. And that's going to make it, make it very easy to cut from one place, cut from another. The best example I can think of, I should have illustrated this, is you know those really cool craft scissors that you can buy? where uh, it cuts in like a zigzag pattern. You can get a set of six of them. So when I cut a piece of paper with that zigzag pattern and then go to a piece of red paper and cut with that exact same set of scissors, I can now bring those two pieces together, the white paper and the red paper, put them together and it actually matches up perfectly. That's what using these types of special miniature scissors does, is it allows you to cut two pieces of DNA from different organisms with the same scissors. And then you can take those two bits of DNA and put them together and their ends will overlap really nicely and uh, be able to attach together. You add another little bit of glue using the enzyme called ligase, we'll see in a second right here. We're going to take a bit of DNA from this eukaryotic cell and we're gonna transfer it to another bacterial cell. We're gonna use a little vehicle to help us do it called a vector, it's, called, it's a plasmid we're gonna see in a second. And the DNA, there's a lot of DNA, all the chromosomes. So what we need to do is we need to isolate the specific section of DNA we want or the gene that we want. And so what we would have to do is a little bit of research beforehand and know exactly where that segment or where that gene is and then choose which type of restriction enzyme or which type of those little scissors to use to actually cut. If we cut both of these, both the vector and the DNA with the same scissors, it's going to create that little overlapping end, overlapping end, like the arts and crafts scissors that can be combined together and glued together and then inserted into uh, a bacterial cell. And then this bacterial cell will start following whatever instructions we've just inserted there. It could be to produce insulin. It could be for any other types of reasons. So using biotechnology to help us out. So let's label a few things. The donor DNA, this is the origin of the gene that we're interested in. And the plasmid, which is going to be our little vehicle, are extracted. So plasmid is just a loop of DNA, which is used as a vector. And a vector is a fancy way to say vehicle to help transfer um, DNA from one cell to another. Viruses are also used as vectors. We can use viruses to insert, inject DNA into other types of living organisms and bacteria. So here's our donor DNA. The donor DNA and the plasmid are cut at specific points with the same restrict restriction endonuclease. It's the same arts and craft scissors, and it creates these sticky ends on both sides that can actually be combined together really easily. So now if I put 
this part and this part together and I add a little bit of enzyme called DNA ligase. Ligase is used to help um, link these back together. Then I have a full plasmid. If I insert that into a bacterial cell, a new bacterial cell, the bacterial cell will just carry out whatever instructions that are found inside the DNA and will therefore start creating, start reading that gene, doing transcription and translation, and creating that protein of interest. So you can see how this could be very, very useful if done on a large scale to help produce proteins uh, that we need more of, basically. So there's an example, there's a vector, there's a donor DNA, and that's how we put it all together to make the new product. Okay, so hopefully you understand how DNA can be transferred from one organism to another using some basic technology in biology. So DNA ligase, restriction endonuclease, endonucleases, and plasmids.